A couple of years ago, July 2013, Google did the unspeakable. They closed down Google Reader. Google Reader was a service I depended highly upon. It's a service I used on a day-to-day -day basis, so I had to find an alternative quickly. I tried out a bunch of different online services, but just kept coming up on the idea that there is a possibility this service is going to shut down eventually, just like Google Reader did. So I took the advice that was presented to me at the time, and I tried out a server called TTRSS. I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail about it, but essentially TTRSS is a tiny tiny RSS server. It's an RSS server that you host on your own hardware or VPS or whatever it is that you've got. It just requires a web server and a database and it sort of makes everything else work. It does take a bit of knowledge to get it up and going, but again, I, that's another video entirely. So at that time, again July 2013, I took what I had. I took pieces and parts from different computers, and I cobble them together into what I lovingly referred to as the Frankenputer. There are a couple of videos about that on my old channel, but again, that's a topic for another day. But here in front of you, you can see the Frankenputer. Had an Intel D525 processor in it, dual core, four threads, four gigs of RAM, doesn't really matter about the hard drive speed or size, and that's about all there was to it. Now the problem with this is, it's a server, it's a desktop class machine that's been sitting in my floor, taking up space and using lots of power for the last two and a half years, and because it's a machine I don't touch particularly often, it means that I don't actually update it often enough. It was running Ubuntu Linux version 13.04, because that's the latest and greatest that was available at the time, and it's still running that, because I never actually bothered to upgrade it. I would literally just log into the web interface from my browser. If TTRSS said there was an update, I would do that, and that's as far as I ever went. So the more I thought about it, the more I realized it was time to go ahead and upgrade, and that was a bit of a massive upgrade, so I decided to go about it a little bit differently. Because I found on one of my shelves a sadly unusual used stack of Raspberry Pis. I had the original Raspberry Pi, as well as the Model B Plus, and the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. I'd use them here and there for little things, but never actually settled them down to use for a long-term server solution. So I decided to go ahead and take the latest and greatest one I had, the Raspberry Pi 2, and use it as my new server. Now the next problem I came upon with this is I didn't actually have a case for it, but then the obvious thought sparked in my head. 3D printer. So I took a little bit of time and a little bit of glow-in-the-dark filament, and I made a case. It made the case standing entirely upright, and it took hours and hours. I'm gonna say it took in the neighborhood of about eight to ten hours at least, which is a bit of a time investment. But when all was said and done and the case was printed, I was very, very easily able to take my Raspberry Pi 2 and slip it into the case. There was actually a little extra piece that fits on the end to sort of hold it in place, but that piece is sort of useless. It doesn't actually do a whole lot. And here in front of me, you can see the finished product. This is the Raspberry Pi 2 in its 3D printed case. And you might note it looks a little bit odd. Of course, you've got the green sort of showing through from the board inside of it, but it's also glow in the dark. Meaning when I turn all the lights down, it glows in the dark. That was just a little bit of a bonus in my opinion. But to make a long story short, I went ahead and I downloaded a copy of Raspbian. That is the Debian based Linux distribution for the Raspberry Pi. And they had a light distribution of it, means that it didn't really have anything pre-installed on it. About 300 megabytes to download it. I stuck it on this little micro SD card that fits nicely into the end of the 3D printed case. It's only an eight gigabyte card, nothing flashy about it. It's a class six card, so it's not hugely fast. Once I had all that set up, I plugged it in, I powered it on, I SSH'd into it, I installed a couple of pieces of software, and now I have an RSS server that is this size that runs on a five volt power supply instead of a 380 watt power supply. And the funny thing is the performance is significantly better. The new Raspberry Pi 2 has a quad core processor in it that's a faster processor than the one that was in my Intel D525 chip. It does have less RAM, but I've remote it into the server and checked on it, and it's only using about 90 megabytes maximum, 80 megabytes usually of RAM. And when it runs its actual processing every few minutes to pull all of the RSS servers, the CPU cores never actually max out. And I did do some testing. With the Raspberry Pi Model B Plus, you can do the exact same thing. It doesn't run quite as fast, but it still runs circles around my older system. So to make a bit of a short story long, if you've been missing out on having an RSS client of your very own and you don't want to give all of your information to some sort of a cloud-based service, rolling your own with a $35 Raspberry Pi might be a great way to go. Alternatively, there are other CPU board type things like this that are in the works. There's one that I just backed on Kickstarter called Pine A64 that's a $15 computer. So once that one comes in, I'm going to be doing something kind of similar with it. I think it's actually going to be a little bit more powerful than this with I think half the RAM of what this has in it. So 512 megs of RAM, but a significantly faster processor. So again, you can definitely get into something like this for a very reasonable price and keep your data to yourself. As far as all of the technical specifications, all of the details on how to set this up, that's again a topic for an entirely different day. I just thought this was a nice, fun 3D printing slash tech related video and I kind of wanted to share with you guys. So let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you have any suggestions for other things to do with Raspberry Pis, let me know in the comment section as well. 
well. And if you have not already, make sure to check out the Pine A64. I think there's only a couple of days left on it, and you can pick up a PC for $15, and I think it was $7 shipping, which is a bit high, but understandable. Not a sponsor, not a paid plug or anything, just something that I'm backing and I thought I would share with you guys. So as always, remember, if you like this video, leave me a thumbs up below the video. Subscribe to receive more of my videos when they become available, and we'll see you again next time.